Federico, you are from Italy. I am. And you, you wrote a book, this book, Robots Will Steal Your Job, but that's okay. That's the title of the book. What is it about? Well, as the title says, uh, I believe automation has been eroding human labor. That means works we do usually ever more faster. And it will increase the speed. So jobs will be taken away by machines and artificial intelligence and computers and robots faster and faster and faster. In fact, faster than we can ever hope to remediate because we adjust to changes in a linear manner and technology advances exponentially. So I think this gap will widen and this will eventually bring the entire economy to a catastrophic collapse. That's my prediction. And that is a very bad thing if business as usual goes on. But I think on the flip side, if we change our perspective, we can transform this crisis into a solution. And that's what I hope to inspire with this book. And what is the solution? Well, the solution uh, in my mind uh, would be to utilize the same technologies that are creating the problem, namely automation becoming so efficient and so intelligent that humans are less and less required to emancipate ourselves from the shackle of working for survival, labor for income. Uh, you work, you get money, you buy things. That's the cycle of consumption production that's been going on for a few thousand years. This can be changed, at least for the necessities. Uh, I, I'm not interested in luxury goods like, oh, what if somebody wants, you know, uh, gold-plated uh, handles and doors and I, I don't care. What I'm talking about is food, water, shelter, um, warmth, energy, uh, the things we need to survive and to have a decent life. These things can be quite easily produced through automation. And it would be very easy to do on a global scale, but I don't believe very much in governments nor in the corporations, institutions. As, as an institution, the agglomerate of corporations to provide for people. So I believe individuals and communities are the solution. And these technologies likely are becoming more and more democratized because they are more widely available. They cost less and less money and they can be replicated through open source. Because with open source, if something is open, I can access the specifics, the code that defines what that thing is, even if it's a hardware thing, like a physical object. If I make a 3D printer that prints itself, I can 3D print other 3D printers, and each one of them can print objects of any sort, of any kind. So we don't need a manufacturing industry. I believe we can do it now by working less and by using our intelligence and our cognitive abilities to find smarter ways, not to find new jobs and work more, but to find smarter jobs and work less, and hence have more free time, be less dependent on money, and enjoy more our lives and do what we want. Okay, so this means that our society should use technology in a way that uh, everything is available for everybody. We should use technology in a smart way, and by that I mean we should use it for things we need first. So instead of keep trying to produce for an economy that makes things that we mostly don't need and don't increase the quality of our life, we should first focus on what we actually need and try to provide that as efficiently as we can by working less and less and less and having the maximum efficiency. We have distributed technologies for producing our own green energy. We have photovoltaics. We have microgeneration for um, wind power. We've got ways of capturing uh, the rain water and filter it down and then make it potable so we can drink that. Uh, we can produce food 
easily within the doors of our own house with vertical gardens, with hydroponics. Uh, uh, you can have a small garden in the backyard and use techniques such as permaculture that allows you to work less and produce more. So everybody should uh, become a, a small farmer in his own house? Why not? House? You just take care of that maybe an hour a day and that reduces. So a family of four can reduce their food bill up to 2,000 euros a year just by having a small garden and producing some vegetables and fruits and beans and that can be done. So why not? Plus, it also increases the quality of your life because uh, you, you spend time with your family, you do some physical activity, it's a bonding uh, time. So uh, you get in contact with nature again and then your kids, they ask you, how does this work? And then you explain them the cycle of life and how things are connected and it you, you can explain botany and then biology and then you start to talk about physics and, and curiosity kicks in. So it's, it's, a, it's a virtuous cycle to be more independent and um, to be more smart about what, we, what, what you do. And also, you don't have to, like, it's not like everything you do has to be within your own house. You have a community. So you can ask your friends, you can share things with your neighbor. Uh, maybe you'll see your neighbor for the first time after 20 years, you're like, oh, look, are you my neighbor? Yeah, I've been here. How long? 25 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who will be doing the dirty work? Give me an example of dirty work. Cleaning the streets or... Robots. <laughs> they do that already in Japan. Uh, in Germany, uh, there, there are some experiments running and... Uh, look, every, every dirty job could be easily, easily, quite easily automated. Uh, the reason we have so many jobs that people shouldn't do is because we need to employ people because we need to give them money, because we need to keep the cycle going. So if we really cared about what we need and not just give people money, which is the purpose of the economy, keep the monetary system running, we could, take, we could phase out 90% of jobs easily. Easily. And still provide for everyone. For everyone. Like, uh, farmers are paid not to produce. Um, some farmers, they destroy their crops, they burn them, they throw their milk in the sewage because they are out of market, like the price is too low. We would pay like 20 cents for a rice and the milk. It would destroy the market. This is nonsense. Like if we produce in abundance, then the prices should go down, but they don't. So <clears throat> do you think everybody should get a basic income? Because there is a whole movement of basic income. I don't believe in basic income. Like, um, I believe this, the, s an entity, which could be the community itself, self-organized, or the state, I don't care. The point is, people shouldn't be worried about their survival anymore. It, it was a problem when we didn't have the technology, but right now, I think it's becoming detrimental. Um, so I wouldn't give people like a thousand euros a month regardless. And that, because that creates lots of trickle down psychological problems. Uh, so uh, loss of meaning, uh, loss of responsibility. Uh, there, there are lots of things because people are, aren't ready for that. But you could give them access to resources. So instead of giving you money, I give you access to a certain amount of resources. So for instance, um, you could provide a certain amount of water, a certain amount of food, a certain amount of everything for free, which is, I don't know, defined by the um, World Health Organization as the minimum requirement, whatever. And then if you want more, then you pay. And you pay exponentially more. So if you consume a hundred times more energy than you need, you'll pay millions. But if you consume just the energy you need, you pay nothing. Um, this would be the state approach. But I don't believe in the state because I think politics is, is inadequate, uh, to say the least. So I believe in individuals and communities. What uh, about weak people, about ill people? Um, who, um, 
who will um, be caring for them if they don't, if they can't uh, provide their own food, for instance? I don't believe in absolute individualism. Of course, mm -hmm. like just like now the state has programs for people who need help, in the same way, the state should provide or the community should provide, but, um, or an integration of the two. There are so many people doing voluntary work. It's amazing. Uh, and, and they do that regardless of the fact that they have to work on useless jobs uh, 9 to 5. If they had more free time, we would have more people helping others, helping the elderly, helping uh, people with handicaps. Uh, just because it gives us meaning, uh, it's good and feels good to help other people. And if you had more free time, you would even more. So this whole idea is to stop what I think this nonsense of earning a living in 2012, which is dreadful, just the idea that, that with this kind of technology we still have to earn a living as if it was the 17th century. And uh, have more free time. And the free time that you have, well, you use it as you wish. And when you actually give free time to people who are educated about the problems, about society, about the universe, and what happens is people do cool things. Like they study, they uh, start projects, they start communities, they help other people. This is what happens when you give people free time and you give them a sense of responsibility and education and a sense of perspective. So if I don't believe any single monetary or political thing, agenda or program can solve any problem. It's a cultural problem. So that's why I think we should change our perspective. The importance of money would decrease yes. if, if uh, we follow your model. Which decreases the debt which decreases dependence on um, banks, which decreases the problem. So, yes, reduce the importance of money and keep money only to the things that are unnecessary for survival, but are like wishes. Um, I don't mind having a monetary system as long as it doesn't undermine the ability for people to live, which now it does. We produce enough food for, I think, uh, 17 or 18 billion people. There's 7 billion of us. We should be doing quite good. But there are 2 billion people starving. That's, that's not economy. An economy is the intelligent management of the household. And having twice or three times as much food as you need and not being able to provide for everyone, I think it's... it's it shows the inefficiency, the absolute inefficiency of the market system and of the monetary system. It's a problem of distribution and it's absolutely inadequate. Um, who do you think uh, will be again against your, your model? I'm thinking about the rich people. No, why? why? Uh, rich people who are smart understand that we are part of a system and that when everyone benefits, they all benefit. They benefit themselves. Um, like you don't want, it's, it's, a, it's a simple example, but it, I think it, it illustrates. Um, you know in uh, Batman, the uh, Bruce Wayne, he has his parents who are super rich and they're trying to help the city. And there is so much poverty. And what happens? They get shot by a random guy in the street who was just trying to get their, their money. If that person wasn't poor and wasn't desperate, it wouldn't have happened. So if you increase the quality of life of everyone, everyone is better off. Everyone's safer, everyone, you know. What, uh, what feedback do you get when you present your model in public? Typically two reactions. Um, well, first of all, no one is indifferent. No one is like, yeah, okay. <laughs> they, are either, they either hate it with a passion or they are absolutely in love with it and they subscribe to the idea and say, yes, 
that's this is what I was waiting for. And it, I would say very few people hate it. Um, and those who do, usually they, they don't disagree. Uh, and it's not like they think it doesn't work. Or uh, they just say, ah, people are too stupid, or societies are, they take too long to change. What you're saying is possible, but in 10 generations, not in 10 years. And I believe it's possible with, well within 10 years. At, and we can start the transition anytime. In fact, I would suspect that if we all, if, if there was a massive event, such as the United States falling, the United States economy falling, which I think it's not likely within five years, but it's possible, um, then the change could, could happen even ra more rapidly. Okay, if, you, if we look around the world, we, we can see that obviously something is crashing down. If you look uh, in Spain, what happens in Spain right now? Yeah, yeah Spain, Greece, Italy, uh, Ireland. It's, it's like a domino effect. They're all falling. And they all will fall. Um, we might think that France and Germany, because you know, they're the big ones in Europe, they'll never fall, but it could just as well fall. Because, okay, then the monetary paradigm based on interest and infinite growth is unsustainable to, to begin with, mathematically unsustainable, because you create more requirement for money, then there is money. Because when you create 100 billion euros and you lend it to a 2% interest, that 2% interest doesn't exist in the money supply. So you, there is no way to get it back. So it's in physically and mathematically impossible to pay all the debt in the world. What you can do is you move the debt geographically. So you move the debt, the German debt, you move it to Italy. So Italy has a debt to Germany and to France. That's like half of our public, the, the national debt that we have. Um, but if we were to extinguish that, we would have to do it at the expenses of someone else. So someone else would be in debt. So it, it's a problem that, that can't be solved. It just moved around geographically. It's nonsense. And eventually, it will hit anyone. <laughs> Uh, is your model applicable uh, to Europe and industrialized countries, or are you also thinking about uh, countries of the south? Oh, absolutely! I, I actually because they're, they're, I mean, they are they are not uh, they don't uh, have this um, amount of technology oh, they do. at their disposal. Absolutely, do. I mean, today's technology is. Uh, allow you to leapfrog entire generations of older technologies. Why would you get a five-year-old technology when you can just get one now? And once the technology gets to you know a thousand euros or less, it's become it basically becomes available to everyone. Uh, if you go to Nigeria, people have smartphones. They might not have food, but they have smartphones because they're cheap and available and they work. So the same will happen with 3D printers. The same will happen with um, 3D printed circuits and computers. Uh, now there is the OLPC, the One Laptop Per Child Project, 70 euro, no, actually 70 dollars, so 50 euro tablet, mm. touch screen. Um, the Raspberry Pi, a 18 euro computer. These, these things are cheap, even if you live in uh, Uganda or, you know, uh, Cambodia, you can you can afford it. So, Federico, what uh, what uh, should people do if they want to adopt your model and change the paradigm? I think people should find out more information. A starting point would be my book, where I present there are like seventy pages just dedicated to uh, advice and solutions. I mean, this chapter is called "Practical Advice for Everyone." I think it's, you know. <laughs> sounds very practical. Yes, sounds very practical. And here's uh, another chapter called um, Yes, 
how a family can live better by spending smart, for instance. Uh, so finding more information, he, here is just an outline, a few suggestions. And there are references to lots of websites and uh, other places where you can get more detailed information. And things you can do in your house tomorrow. So, you know, find more information. So let's change the world. Yeah. <laughs>